In this video, I'm gonna share literally everything I've learned about how to start and grow a YouTube channel, specifically in the lifestyle vlogging niche. I have my laptop here and I have written down so many notes. I'm also putting the timestamps in the description, so hopefully that's helpful as well. I wanna start with a little backstory. I started my YouTube channel in December of 2022, and then six months later, I hit 1,000 subscribers, June 2023. It took four months to get my next thousand, and then a few months later, we're here, and I just recently hit 5,000 subscribers. I don't have all of the answers, and a lot of this is things that have worked for me and just my opinion on things, so take it with a grain of salt. I wanted to just put everything I have out there into one video so that it can hopefully help other small channels like mine. First, I'm gonna talk about starting a channel. The hardest part is actually starting. You can't wait until you feel ready because that feeling might not ever come. A quote that I like from James Clear is that consistency enlarges ability. The more you do it, the better you're gonna get, and so you have to start somewhere. Step one is to figure out what you want your channel to be about. It's definitely okay to try a few different things out at the beginning, but try not to be too all over the place because that could keep people from coming back to your channel. Step two is to actually create your channel, and with this you have to think about your profile picture, your banner, the description box of your videos. For my banner, I used Canva to create it, and then as far as my description box goes, I actually looked at other YouTubers and figured out what I wanted to include in my description box based off of what they had in theirs. These can be things like product links, timestamps, links to other social media accounts, and make sure you include any disclaimers like whether or not the video is sponsored, whether or not you have affiliate links in the description, the fact that you don't own the rights to the music you're using. Step three is figuring out how you're gonna film and edit. You have to think about things like a camera, a phone, editing software, tripod, mic, lighting. I'll talk about everything that I use in a second. And step four is to post your first video and stick to a schedule. Try to be as consistent as possible, but just focus on one video at a time. I know when I first started making videos, thinking too far ahead stressed me out, but consistency really is key. All right, you made it to the next section and we're gonna talk about equipment. Please don't be afraid to use your phone to film. One of my friends here on YouTube, Sarah Jolie, I'll link her channel down below, she only uses her phone to film and her videos turn out really great. She started her channel only a few months ago and already hit a thousand subscribers so definitely go check her out but that's just one example that you don't have to have nice equipment or a nice camera in order to start your channel I actually use my phone for vlogging when I'm outside of the house because I get a little bit vlog shy and I don't really want to carry around my big camera everywhere now if you are able to afford a camera that's a super great option as well the camera that I use is the Canon EOS rebel SL3 it was actually gifted to me by my husband before we got married and I've just been using it ever since. Definitely research other options if you have the budget to buy a camera. The one that I have is a little bit bulky, so I wouldn't necessarily suggest it as a vlog camera, but in my opinion, it's great for like sit down videos like this. One of the first things that I purchased for my channel is an external microphone. I have the Rode Video Micro. I think it has really great audio quality. I can link it down below if you're interested, but I definitely think that having bad audio is one of the quickest ways to deter someone from continuing to watch your video. I use a couple different tripods. I'll link both of them down below. One of them that you're currently sitting on right now is pretty tall. It's almost as tall as I am. And then another one that I have is more compact and travel friendly. As for lighting, I really just use natural light in my house. So also if you start to see the sunset right now, that's why. If you have any recommendations for good lighting for vlogging, please comment it down below or even just DM me the link on Instagram because that's definitely something I'm still looking for. I do have this little light that I can link down below and it kind of changes colors and stuff, but I don't really use it super often. Just because it's not like big enough in my opinion but it was super cheap, so if you're interested in that, again, all the links will be down below. I definitely recommend purchasing an external hard drive so that you can edit all of your videos on that. I will <laughs> I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I will have the one that I use linked down below, but honestly, I think you can use any kind. I use my Apple MacBook to edit on. I definitely want to invest in like a bigger desktop computer one day, but for now, a laptop works. And lastly, let's talk about editing software. I started out on iMovie. It's nice because it was free, but it made editing really hard for me, in my opinion. You kind of have to find a lot of workarounds in order to make the editing good. It did take me a lot longer to edit using iMovie, but again, it was free and it was a really great place for me to start. If you do use iMovie, I'm actually gonna link down below a video that I found that was super helpful for me. Basically, it shows you how to put text or things on the screen with a transparent background, since the text feature, in my opinion, on iMovie is super limited. Hopefully that helps you, because it really helped me, but it definitely makes editing take a lot longer. 
So like I said, after nine months, I invested in Final Cut Pro, which is what I use currently. It is a one-time payment of $300, which is a lot up front. But if you plan on making videos for a long time, then in my opinion, it's completely worth it. Also, I wanna quickly throw in there that I do use Epidemic Sound for copyright-free music. I can also get some of my sound effects there, like the clicking noise or the typing noise. I do pay a monthly membership subscription fee, but again, that is worth it in my opinion because I definitely don't wanna get a copyright strike on YouTube. If you guys are interested in Epidemic Sound, it would literally mean so much to me and would support my channel if you used my Epidemic Sound link that I have in the description. But if you don't, that's cool too. Okay, let's get into the best part and that is tips for getting more views and growing your channel. A huge tip I have is to study other channels. Please understand that studying and copying are two completely different things. When I watch other channels that post similar content to mine, I study the video as I watch it. I focus on things like how do their videos flow? What is their intro like? What does their thumbnail look like? Do they follow some sort of storyline or pattern? What are their transitions like? Do they have sounds? Do they have text? Doing this has literally helped my channel so, so much. Honestly, at the beginning, it can be really helpful to pick up on little tricks that other YouTubers do. And then as you learn and grow, you're gonna start to develop your own unique style. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with finding inspiration from other channels. My next piece of advice is to consider taking a course. If you have the extra money, taking a course could be really, really helpful. I've noticed that there seems to be a lack of courses available specifically for vloggers, but I've actually been taking the Storytelling Masterclass for Vloggers course by Jackson Tandy, which is specifically for vloggers and creators like me who vlog about their life. Jackson, the creator of the course, actually reached out to me recently and asked if I would be willing to bring more awareness to his course. Honestly, I'm really, really excited to do so because I genuinely stand behind and support this course. He basically breaks down how to format your vlogs in order to increase your average view duration and ultimately grow your channel. He teaches how to tell a good story with very simple strategies, how to choose a theme, how to create videos from start to finish, and create vlogs that are highly entertaining. There's also lessons about how to make better intros, chapters, titles, thumbnails, literally so much information in this course. One of my favorite parts is that he even shows case studies from very successful vloggers like Casey Neinstadt, Kelly Stamps, your mom Ashley. He'll break down some of their successful videos that they've created and show us what type of techniques we can use and learn from them. The concepts aren't complicated and they can overall help vloggers create better vlogs. I am genuinely so excited that a course like this exists. I'm actually almost done with it and I've learned so many different things about theme, vlog structure, how to come up with ideas in a new and exciting way. So I really do recommend this course if you have the extra money and want to invest in your channel. I'll have the link down below to this course. And of course, I wanna be completely transparent with you guys. He did give me access to the course as well as an affiliate link with a discount for you all if you would like to use it. You can get a 10% discount on the course only for the next 30 days if you use the code JOY10. Okay, my third tip is to rewatch your videos before posting them and notice the parts that you get bored at. I am constantly re-watching my videos while editing them and cutting out parts that I think viewers would probably drop off at. Yes, it definitely makes editing take a very long time, but I would rather spend the extra time and upload a video that is higher quality than rush editing and not get many views. So when you rewatch your video, if you find yourself getting bored or zoning out, then that's a good sign that you should probably cut that part. Also, accept the fact that just because you filmed it doesn't mean you need to include it in the video. So my next tip is to film way more than you think you'll need just so that you have a lot more to work with and keep the video moving along. Again, people get bored super easily. It's important that you devote the extra time to editing. In my opinion, the majority of your time in this whole video creation process should be devoted to editing. The filming and the research searching and things like that should take up a much smaller portion of your time. My next tip, it's to cut out your breaths. That definitely helps make the video move faster and keep the audience more engaged. Switch up the songs as often as you can. People get really bored hearing the same music over and over. To be honest, I think I include between like five to eight songs in a typical vlog. And with each new video, I definitely spend a good like 30 minutes on Epidemic Sound just trying to find new music to put into my vlog. I'm sure you've heard this tip before, but it's really important and that 
that is quality over quantity. It is so much better to put out one high quality video a week versus two not so great quality videos. And I have to repeat my disclaimer that that is just my opinion. What are your thoughts on that actually? I'm curious. My next tip is to plan out the videos in advance. Of course, it can be really helpful to plan when you'll film, edit, and upload. If anything, at least plan the idea and the concept well ahead of filming. Also, in case you're curious, I use Notion for all of my content planning. Okay, this next tip kinda, you know, is targeted at myself, and that is to get rid of perfectionism. I can be so hard on myself with certain videos where I'm like, I wasn't good enough in that video, or the editing wasn't as great. Honestly, as long as you're doing it to the best of your ability, you cannot get hung up on perfectionism. You have to just post the video and move on to the next one. And my last tip for this specific section of the video is to stay ahead of the timeline. For example, try not to post a monthly reset video like three days into the month. From my experience, those types of videos do better when you post them a couple days before the start of the month. And this can also apply to things like back to school videos, Christmas, New Year content. Try to just stay a little bit ahead of the curve on that if you can. I've definitely learned that with those types of videos, I have to post them sooner than I think I need to. Okay, so let's talk about specifically how I do things for my channel. I make all of my thumbnails using Canva. I actually don't have Canva Pro and I haven't really had a problem with the regular version of Canva, but if you want to pay the extra for Canva Pro, I'm sure it has better features. The thing that's helped me the most, and I feel like I've kind of gotten to the groove with it recently, is to kind of have like a template that I use for my thumbnails. So if you scroll through my channel, you can kind of see that a lot of my thumbnails look similar. I have the same font, so that's a piece of advice, is like pick a font and then use that font consistently on your thumbnails. I typically do like the three column picture type of thumbnail and then I just change out the wording, change out the pictures, and it makes my thumbnail making process really easy. I actually use this app called Photo Director. I'll put it on the screen, kind of how I do it, but I basically use that to get like the white border around certain objects. I typically just put a white border around a color out of me sometimes, but that app comes in handy because I don't have Canva Pro. I think in Canva Pro you can do that without needing like a third app. Second app, what am I, I can't count right now. Also, I learned this really cool like hack that I'm gonna tell you guys about because I wish I knew it sooner. But if you have an iPhone, basically what you do is you find the picture that you want an outline of, you can hold down the object that you want outlined, and then it'll give you the option to share. And basically you can just save the PNG image to your camera roll. So if you're using Canva, you can upload that photo and it already is like perfect because it's the perfect cutout of what you want. As far as how I come up with my titles, this is kind of my process. I film the video, right? And I have like the topic of the video. So for instance, if it's a morning routine or a reset routine or a nine to five day in my life, from that point, I try to make the title as straightforward as possible. So if it's my 7 a.m. morning routine, I am titling it 7 a.m. morning routine or something along those lines. Or if it's a day in my life working nine to five, I will literally title it nine to five work day in my life or day in my life working a nine to five job. Because in my experience, people are more prone to click on the videos where the title is extremely straightforward and they know exactly what they're getting themselves into. Also, I do have the YouTube Studio app on my phone and they do have a spot where you can click on analytics and scroll over to the research tab and they kind of give you like top searches. So I kind of use that for inspiration as well. I can click on it and then see like what other videos are people making around that topic and how are they titling their videos. I'm not gonna do like a full editing tutorial just because I don't feel qualified or good enough to do that, but I'm gonna briefly go over my editing process. Like I said, I use Final Cut Pro. Basically, I download all of the footage from my SD card on onto my hard drive and then once it's downloaded there, I then upload it to Final Cut Pro and I start editing. I start by going through all of the footage and taking out everything that I know I don't wanna include in the video. And you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like the beginning and the end of clips that like you don't really need or if there's dead space in a clip because literally so often I'm filming a clip and then I just am silent for like 10 seconds. And I have to cut that out because nobody wants to see me just like staring into space for a full minute. <laughs> Once I've gone through that first run through, I go through a second time. And at that point, I am being very picky with what I keep in the video. I'm cutting out any unnecessary breath or if I say like too much, which happens a lot. I basically get it down to the final footage that I'm including. 
Then I go through a third time and that's when I start adding text, music, and transitions. It's definitely a very, very long process. On average, a vlog will take me between 15 to 20 hours to edit. I think that's kind of slow to be honest, so hopefully it doesn't take you as long as it does me, but I really do put my heart and soul into the editing and I genuinely want to finish that video knowing that I did the best I could with the edits to make it the best video it possibly can be. Let's talk about what to put on your media kit. I will show you my media kit. I'm gonna put it on the screen right here. Honestly, I found this template from Canva. They have a lot of free media kit templates and I tried my best to personalize it. I have a little about me section. Of course, I have the link to my YouTube channel. As far as the YouTube section goes, I list the amount of subscribers that I have, the average monthly watch time that I have, the average monthly views that I get, average monthly impressions that I get, and then what percent of my audience is female. I also include other demographics like top countries and age range. Of course I have my Instagram on there as well, but I honestly don't really post super often on there. And then of course at the bottom I have my business email, but that's pretty much what I include on my media kit. And I don't know if I'm doing that right. So feel free to weigh in in the comments below. I need to hurry up because the sun is literally setting. The next thing I wanna mention is all about my experience working with brands. And the first thing I wanna say is that views matter more than subscribers do. That's something that I kinda of wish I knew sooner, but I did catch on to that pretty fast, that it doesn't always matter the number of subscribers that you have. It really, really matters how many views each of your videos are getting. So most of the brands that I've worked with have actually contacted me through my email. I put my business email address in the description of all of my videos, as well as in my YouTube bio, and I guess that's where they're finding Finding it. I know as your channel grows and starts to get more views, you'll definitely start getting contacted by more brands. I definitely started off with gifted collabs, which means that a brand sent me a product and I mentioned the product in a video and included the link in the description box. It's so normal to do that, especially when you're first starting out. And I cannot tell you how freaking exciting it is to like have a brand literally send you a product, especially at the beginning. It's like, oh my gosh, they're sending me something. I don't care what it is. Like what? I don't know. But of of course, like be really selective and picky with the brands that you work with. Also, when brands start emailing you, please make sure that they're legit because there are so many scams out there. One of the ways that I do it is that if it's not from like, you know, the at, like the domain, if it's not from their business and it says like at gmail.com, maybe it's not a scam, but like I would rather be safe than sorry. So I don't really even respond to the emails that come from like Gmail or Yahoo or whatever, because there are a lot of scammers that just have fake email addresses at that. I think I had gotten contacted by Under Armour, some sort of Under Armour partnerships email, but at gmail.com. And I was like, that, that's a scam. That's not really Under Armour. The video stopped recording because it stops at 30 minutes and you guys, it's already stopped twice, which means I've been filming for an hour and I'm still not done. <laughs> this video is so long and I'm so sorry. Also, I highly suggest making sure that with each brand deal, there's a contract in place. I've had two brands that didn't have a contract. The first brand I said, you know, like, hey, I really would appreciate if there was a contract in place. And this was one of my like very first brand deals. And I was like, oh my gosh, am I like getting screwed over? I hope not. But anyway, they were really nice and decided to just create a contract for me. The second brand that didn't send a contract actually said that I could send them one. So I ended up Googling and like using templates from another brand deal I did and changing the wording and then sending it to them and they signed it for me. But having a contract just makes me feel safer and makes me know for sure that like I'll receive the payment because it's legally binding. So in my experience, this is how a brand deal normally happens. They will send you an email asking for a collaboration. At that point, I have two different email templates ready to go. One that is asking for more information and one that's turning the brand down. I will give you both of these templates on the screen if that's something that you're interested in, just try to make it your own. Definitely don't be afraid to negotiate the terms. That's something that I was kind of scared to do at the beginning, but please realize that you do have a say. You can negotiate price, you can negotiate the length of the integration, you can negotiate the posting date, just be vocal about what it is that will work for you the best. And then also obviously like work with them as well. Also keep in mind that a lot of brands do want to review the video prior to you posting it. So for me, I try to have the video completely edited at least like three to five days before the posting date so that it gives them some time to review it. And I normally upload it as an unlisted video and then send them that unlisted link and that's how they can view the video and approve it or not. And from my experience, I have only had one brand tell me that I needed to add or change something. But other than that, as long as you follow all of the guidelines that they tell you to speak on and do and show in the video, then you should be 
good to go and they should approve it. As far as what to charge, definitely talk to other people that are in your niche and around your same size. That really helped me. Also, you can ask the brand what their budget is for the collaboration and that can give you a little bit of an idea of what brands are willing to pay. And as far as when you receive the payment, in my experience, I am typically paid like right after the video is posted, but I have had one brand pay me prior to the video even going live. Also, if you can, try to have it in the contract that you wanna receive the payment within like 30 to 60 days after the video gets posted. This hasn't happened to me, but I do know of a few people where the brand took like three months to give them their payment. Oh my gosh, the sun is quickly setting. Okay, let's talk about the highly debated topic of do you need a niche? From what I've seen, niches can be very broad. For instance, I'm a lifestyle channel. I can post about a day in my life or a reset routine or productivity tips, and those videos will still tend to do well for me. However, I highly, highly recommend and encourage you to post videos that are similar to the videos that you're gonna continue to post about. Because for instance, say you post one video outside of your normal content and it happens to go viral, you're gonna gain so many subscribers from that, but they're probably not gonna watch your other videos videos. So then you'll have a really high subscriber count, but really, really low views on your videos, which is honestly why I hesitate to even make a video like this because I don't want people to subscribe for this video because it's not my normal content. But the reason that I am doing this is because most YouTube tip videos are coming from channels that only make YouTube advice content. And I think that it's really valuable to come from a channel that is actually giving advice about what they normally post about, like lifestyle vlogs. I also want to give my thoughts on shorts. This is pretty controversial as well. I do believe that YouTube will push out the channels that post shorts. And I think that posting shorts is a great way to gain a lot of subscribers because I mean, like I said, YouTube will push it out and a lot of people see shorts and a lot of people subscribe because of shorts. However, from what I've seen, shorts can really, really hurt your channel. They leave you with a split audience because you have people subscribing that only watch shorts and don't wanna watch your long form videos. I recently watched a video by Oscar Owen and he did a really good job explaining how shorts can hurt your channel and the right way to post shorts. So I will leave that video linked down below because he can definitely explain it a lot better than I can. So my one piece of advice with shorts is that if you are posting shorts, make sure that they are very similar to the content that you post in the long form version and not just like random things because if you post a random thing that doesn't relate to your long form regular videos, the people that are subscribing for that random thing are probably not gonna watch your regular videos. I'm gonna end this video by touching on some of the questions that I got from you guys and questions that I just wanted to address. First is tags, do they still matter? Honestly, comment down below your answer to that because I don't really know, but I I use tags and I put a lot of tags on my videos just because I feel like they can't hurt. The next question is about my file management system. Like I said, I download all of the footage from my SD card to my external hard drive. And on that hard drive, I have different folders. So I have a folder for all of the footage and then subfolders within that for the months and then subfolders within that for the title of the video. And then I also have a separate folder for the videos that are completely fully edited from Final Cut Pro that are going to be posted. And in there, I also have it by month and by video title, I believe. No, just by month, because it's just the one video file. I don't know if that makes sense. I'll put like screen recordings on the, on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. And then another question was about like my schedule for how often I post on other social media and how I manage it with a full-time job. Honestly, because I spend so much time Time on YouTube I actually don't really have time for other social medias so I just have Instagram and this I don't even have a TikTok, and I rarely post on Instagram I wish that I could do more but because I'm working full-time and doing YouTube like YouTube is my priority and it takes up a lot of time so that's just kind of where my main focus is right now but eventually I do want to challenge myself and try to post more on other social media apps platforms but yes if you do have the time definitely post on those other social media platforms because I feel like that can help drive a lot more traffic to you and your brand and your YouTube channel. The next question is about when I started to gain confidence in my channel and just dealing with self-doubt. When I first started my channel, I definitely did deal with a ton of imposter syndrome and just self-doubt. I had a ton of negative thoughts telling myself, I'm not good enough to do this. I'm not creative enough to succeed. And to be honest, 
I definitely still feel this way from time to time, but I found that the more you show up for your viewers and the more that you show up by posting one video a week or whatever your posting schedule is, your confidence really does start to grow. But yeah, I would say that I did start to grow a lot more confidence after a few months of posting once a week. Another question is how much of a time commitment is it? Let me tell you, it is a huge time commitment. If this is something that you are passionate about and want to do, you will have to make sacrifices. And that is just something that comes with it. Especially like for the people who are working another job, like I am. I work 40 hours a week. I go to the office Monday through Thursday. I only get Friday's work from home. And I do one video a week on YouTube. And I have had to make so many sacrifices, like not as much time to work out, not really any time to hang out with friends, things like that, like not even really having extra time to read. Like I, I don't really have any other hobbies outside of YouTube because I just genuinely don't have the time for it. And that can be really, really hard at times. So you have to really think to yourself, like, am I willing to sacrifice some of those things in order to pursue my goal on YouTube? And how much is it worth it? And if you decide that YouTube isn't worth the sacrifices, that is so okay. But at least you've come to terms with that. And the opposite is true. If you decide that YouTube is worth it, oh my gosh, by all means, go all in, go all in. And I feel like that's what I've done like this past year. But now I'm at the point where I'm learning like okay I actually like probably need friends in my life because I went like a whole year without having any and I am really trying my best to start incorporating some of those just healthy things back into my life while still maintaining my YouTube channel and I think part of that is like letting go of some of the perfectionism with my videos and allowing myself that grace of okay if I have to skip an upload like it is not the end of the world the world keeps moving my channel will be fine and just letting go go of that control is really, really helpful for me. Also just know that if you're doing this, you have to be in it for the long haul. It takes a long time to get monetized. This isn't something that happens overnight to the normal person. And the biggest piece of advice that I can give is to allow yourself time to make progress and to learn. I gave myself like a 50 video rule where I wasn't going to get super hard on myself or get all in my head about my videos until I've reached that 50 video mark because at the beginning I was like oh my videos aren't edited well enough maybe I'm not getting good angles or the flow is not there but I told myself I'm a beginner I'm a newbie at this so I cannot hold myself to that high of a standard until I have put in the work to actually be able to hold myself to a high standard until I've created and posted 50 videos and then I'll get a little bit more strict with myself in a healthy way but that like 50 video rule really helped me when I first started out I'm so sorry about this lighting but the last question is what keeps me going and my answer to that is you have to know your why before I started my channel I wrote down every single reason why I wanted this looking back at that list reminding myself of my reasons why I'm doing this, why I'm pursuing YouTube is ultimately what keeps me going. And I think that's the best way that I can end this video. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are amazing. And if you wanna stick around, that'd be cool. But remember, for the vlogs, not for more YouTube tips. I'll see you guys later. Peace.